Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett, and today I'm gonna to share with you some tips on how to get the most out of your Epiphone Casino. These are some of the most recognizable and classic electric guitars ever made from their use in the Beatles and the Stones all the way up to modern players today. They can get some great tones, but they can also be a little tricky to work with. So we're gonna talk about a few different tips and bits of advice that will help you to get some of the tones that you're picturing in your head out of the guitar that you buy at the store. If you know what you're doing, these guitars are capable of a lot of different things, so let's dive in and talk tone. All right, to get started, number one, I wanna talk about the pickups. Now, the pickups in Epiphone casinos can notoriously be a little bit unbalanced. This is not just volume, but also tonally, and you need to understand what this guitar is and what it's not. A lot of people look at these guitars for that classic kind of British invasion tone. It sort of goes with the territory. The Beatles are known for playing Epiphone casinos. Here's where it gets tricky. When somebody says Beatle guitar tone, what do you think of? It could be a lot of different things. Not only could it be a lot of different things guitar-wise, but there could be way more going on behind the scenes than you realize. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about ways that you can remedy that. Now, first of all, understand that this is a very warm, kind of dark sounding guitar. It's not a bright jangly guitar. Now you may say, well, it sounds bright in some of the recordings that I'm listening to of some of the early gear. A few things to keep in mind there. Number one, they're not built like they used to be. Epiphone's making some good guitars nowadays, but it's it's not at all like it was back in the day when they were actually really on par with their Gibson counterparts made of different higher quality woods, higher quality finishes, higher quality hardwares. Also, the amplifiers were hand-wired and much higher quality than probably what the average amplifier you're plugging into. On top of all that, all the recordings that you're listening to have a lot going on besides just the guitar rig. You're not just listening to the guitar and the amplifier. You're are listening to EQs and compressors and all sorts of things that help produce that sound the best way possible for the listener and for the mix to sound right together. So keep that in mind. It's not as easy as just getting an Epiphone Casino and uh, whatever amp you think pairs well with it. There's a lot more going on to getting a good tone out of that. Now, when I talk about the pickups being a little bit unbalanced, here's one of the tricky things about this guitar. You really can't adjust the pickup height, right? They're dog ear pickups. There's a few simple things you can do to balance them if you feel like they're tonally off. Generally speaking, what happens with an Epiphone Casino is the neck pickup can kind of overpower the bridge pickup. Now I'm not just talking about volume again. It has to do with tone. The neck pickup is so big and fat and warm and can lack a little articulation, but particularly with the way the guitar can also generate a little bit of feedback, that neck tone can just be this massive woolly kind of sound. And then you click up to the bridge and sometimes you can have volume drop issues, but other times it just sounds a little bit weak compared to the neck. They don't quite match well. Very easy thing that I do and this is what I'm doing in this video, is playing with the neck volume rolled off to about nine, and then the bridge tone rolled off to about nine. That takes a tiny bit of the brightness off of the bridge pickup, takes a tiny bit of the power away from the neck pickup, and I find it balances them very well. That's what I like to do with the casino. It works really well. Now, depending on which model of casino you have, you may not need to do that at all. You may need to do it more. You may need to turn the neck pickup back a little bit more, roll the tone off of the bridge a little bit more. It really depends on the casino that you have and the amp that you're playing it into. Now, the other thing is messing with the pickup 
height. Now, you can't adjust the pickup height on this, so what do I mean by that? You can adjust the pole pieces a little bit. You don't want to raise them too much because then it starts looking like these mangly teeth coming out and that just does, doesn't really work. It does help to lower the pole pieces in the neck a little bit. The other thing is if they're really unbalanced volume wise, which I have experienced before, you can shim the bridge. If you want to get into changing pickup covers, first of all, don't. If you get a set of aftermarket pickups and you're looking for a classic metal cover, you can get nickel covers from a place called Axes R Us in the UK. This was pointed out by one of my followers, so thank you for that. Uh, you can get a casino cover that's made of a higher quality material. You just need to know the spacing of the pole pieces. Getting into swapping pickups and getting the right covers can be a pain, but it is doable, so keep that in mind. Now, all that being said, this is still kind of a darker and warmer sounding guitar than a lot of people might expect. Keep in mind that this is the Epiphone equivalent of the Gibson ES330, which is almost exclusively a blues and jazz guitar. Very, very warm, round kind of sound. It's not that sleek, cutting sort of tone. But there is one thing that you can get for very inexpensive that will help remedy everything. If you are an Epiphone Casino player and you want to get more usable tones out of it, this little guy right here can be your best friend. This is an EQ pedal. Now this one is a Joyo six band EQ. These are not expensive. They're I think under 40 bucks new. I'm gonna put a link below in the description as to where you can get this. It is an affiliate link. I get a little bit of a kickback if you buy through that link. Yeah, I'm trying to make money doing this folks. It's not a conspiracy. I actually have a lot of kids, they're hungry mouths to feed, trying to support my family being a musician. I'm not trying to say that to guilt you into buying anything, I'm just saying that to let you know that this is not a paid shill sort of situation. Also, this is not a sponsored demo. This is a very inexpensive pedal that can do worlds for your tone. Now, when you were listening in that first clip, I had this on. And if you know what you're doing with an EQ pedal, it can really clean up the mud and give you much more clarity in your tone. With a casino, what I like to do is pull the frequencies around 200 and 400. I have ducked just a little bit. And then I've also boosted slightly 803K on this one, which are the frequencies you have. Now, are there nicer EQ pedals out there? Yeah, absolutely. You can spend a lot of money on nice EQ pedals. I think this one works really well. You can go further down that rabbit hole if you want to, but let's listen to some back-to-back. -back. I'm gonna start playing with both of these guitars without this turned on, then I'm gonna click it on so you can hear what a dramatic difference it makes. Now for this, I am plugging into a Fender Super Reverb. <laughs> Now, if you're going for an overdriven tone, there are a lot of overdrives out there where you can do a similar thing. Maybe not as fine-tuned as with an EQ pedal, and you can certainly double them up. But for this, I'm going to play a Wampler Pantheon, and I'm going to cut some of the bass and push the treble a little bit more than I might with other guitars, and then adjusted the voice switch accordingly to get the right kind of sound out of it. But you'll hear how the clarity of the pedal ducking out some of the bass really opens up the guitar. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So for this guitar, something like that might be a better option than, for instance, a Tube Screamer. Now, a Tube Screamer is a pedal that I love, but with the Tube Screamer really emphasizing those mids, it's probably not going to give you the same kind of articulation that you might from another pedal, especially one that has its own onboard EQ. If you want to emphasize the warmth and go for more of a modern, thick, bluesy tone, you can do that too. You can get some really awesome tones that are different than that kind of early British tone that a lot of us picture in our heads, but something that's equally cool. So for this, I am using the Pantheon. I am also using a Keeley Hydra, and I'm going to use a harmonic tremolo sound from that like I was using at the beginning, as well as some slide to get some really cool modern blues tones. <laughs> Now, because of its excellent warmth, it can also get a great jazz tone if you emphasize that warmth. You really don't need to back off the tone on the guitar much. You get a better jazz tone by backing off the tone on your amplifier. Now, an important thing to keep in mind, a lot of players like these because they sound acoustically quite pleasant. They're a fun guitar to sit and strum, and because they're fully hollow, they're a little bit louder than some other electric guitars. However, they're really not performance acoustic guitars, so keep that in mind. Yeah, it's fun to sit here and strum. <laughs> But that's certainly not loud enough to gig with. You could do some cool recording stuff with it. Supposedly in Paul Simon, Me and Julio Down by the Schoolyard, supposedly the rhythm track on that is an unmiked electric guitar. <laughs> Sounds about right. So keep in mind that it is a fun guitar to sit and strum with, but it is not an acoustic guitar. I want to shift gears slightly before we move on to one last thing, and that is talking about some troubleshooting. One of the things that casinos are notorious for is rattling. If you've ever had a problem with rattling on these guitars, you're not the only one. I've dealt with it on a number of my casinos, and I can't tell you exactly what it is going to be, but I can at least point you in the right direction. The first culprits for rattling tend to be the bridge and the tailpiece. What you can do from the start is kind of wiggle them around, you know, adjust slightly the height, you know, kind of make sure that they're all sitting well in place, make sure that the strings are anchored nicely in the tailpiece. If that doesn't help, if that's not it, several other things that you can check. I've taken the pick guards off mine. I like the look without the pick guards. If you have the pick guards on, sometimes it could be some of the screws holding the pick guard in place. The other thing, and this is tricky, and this is something I'm actually dealing with on my Letus Casino, which is not currently in this video, is sometimes if the wires get loose from their the little hooky things, it's always technical terms here at Jack Foss and Friends. If your wires get loose from the little hooky things, sometimes if the wire sits against the body, when you hit a cord and it vibrates, the, the wire will actually bounce against the body. Now, I've tried to remedy that one on my own, and I've struggled. Any of these things, if you're uncomfortable doing it, you can take it to a luthier, and they will help you out. It also is not a bad idea to replace some of the hardware on these guitars. It can really benefit from a bridge upgrade, from a tailpiece upgrade, from a nut upgrade, from... The tuners work okay. They're not the best, but they, they work all right. Style-wise, they look great. Any of these things can be a massive benefit, even upgrading the wiring on your guitar, all those things before diving into pickups and whatnot. Epiphone has always seemed to be good at making the bones of a really good guitar, and that goes a long way because you can always upgrade the other parts. You can't change what the piece of wood is. You can't make it another more resonant piece of wood, but you can change the bridge. So while some things frustrate me, like some things that really don't work, and I feel like, you know, it's one thing to use cheap material, but you gotta put on something that works. Come on, Epiphone, let's get with it. 
there are other things about it that I, I think, well, at least they're not cutting corners on the important things. And to a certain extent, getting some of these guitars to players at the price point that they are at, you need to expect that not everything is going to be pristine. That's just marketing nowadays and getting products out to the masses. So keep all of those things in mind. Now, we're going to go back to something else, going for vintage tones here. If any of you are HX Stomp users, I've put together a preset called Casino 66, and this has a bunch of tones in it based on what I was just talking about. Now, this is going for a straight up British Invasion type tone. And in this, you have a heavy compressor, you have a boost and delay that's a tape style delay to add some ambiance, and then you also have a vintage fuzz. Keep in mind that fuzz is a great effect for the casino, not only for old vintage British tones, but if you're a Gary Clark Jr. fan and want to do some heavier modern blues kind of tones with that sort of thing. If you're an HX Stomp user, this preset is available on my webpage. I will put that link in the description, Hungry Mouths to Feed. If you're not an HX Stomp user, it's still available on my website. It just won't benefit you like you understand. Let's move on. So we've got a heavy compressor sound. We've got the fuzz. We've got the tape effect. I also have a built-in EQ that's always on doing exactly what I talked about, cutting a few frequencies that I find troublesome with the casino. And the amplifier in it is the Line 6 model of a Vox. Now, this can be fun to use for recording. It is tweakable, of course, when you load the preset to kind of suit your own rig, whether you're going into an amplifier and you want to turn the amp model off or whether you're just going into a PA and the PA set up a little bit different keep in mind that it can be tweaked but let's take a listen to some of the classic british tones that you can get using modeling like that <laughs> Well, folks, that's what I got, but my opinion is not the only one. Please let us know in the comments. Do you have any unique tricks with the Epiphone Casino to get cool tones, to get different tones, to do setup things that uh, we might not have covered? What do you have to say about the Epiphone Casino? What kind of casinos do you have? Share it with us in the comments. I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like personal gear tips, please join me on Patreon. We'll see you next time.